Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing presumptions that newly minted, if you will, retirees should avoid when coming here to Thailand. Now, I'm not making this video to harangue exactly or to be, you know, nitpickety or even sort of seemingly condescending. That's not the purpose. But over the years, I have noticed there are certain presumptions that foreigners make before they retire here. And they're, they're, they're actually relatively kind of banal. They're, they're kind of basic presumptions, like assuming the way certain things work. So a really good example of this in kind of a different context, and it could apply broadly, is things like presuming that the common law operates or common law notions operate here in Thailand. But that's not precisely what we're getting into with this video. One of the major presumptions, this is just kind of tips for new retirees or folks that are looking to retire. One of the big ones is that I see a lot is retirees will say, well, you know, I need to deal with that, but you know, I can always do that over the phone or, you know, and we're talking here about like government benefits. We're also talking about things like uh, pensions and things. If you're, you know, you may have a private pension, you may have some kind of mixed pension, super, uh, what do they call that in, in uh, Australia, super annuation. I think it's kind of the equivalent of a 401k, things of this nature. If you haven't moved abroad yet and you're looking to, those types of things that you're, you're needing to deal with an institution in the United States be it, or, or in your home country, be, and I'll use the U.S. because that's what I'm most familiar with, you know, if you're, if you're needing to deal with like, you know, social security or you want to get your VA benefits sorted or Medicare, for example, which may not necessarily apply to you here in Thailand, but you just want to have that all sorted out. So that's, you know, sitting there when you're, when you're, if you ever need it, if you will. These are things that if you can do them before coming here, you ought to, because a lot of people I've noticed over the years have made presumptions that, oh, I can deal with that and call back to the United States. Okay, I may have to spend some time on a, on a call, but I can do it. Yeah, it, look, the bureaucracies, especially in an American context, although I suspect this is probably at least to some degree true throughout the so-called Anglosphere, it's not particularly customer service oriented and it's becoming less so by the day. Everything is being moved over to these digital platforms, to websites, etc where you effectively have to learn the way they want you to do it, it uh, on their website. And I've done videos on this. It's, it's quite galling in many ways. And I'm, I'm well aware of the fact that it is a source of great consternation amongst the retiree expat community. The thing to take away from this video on that point is it, things of that nature, get them sorted before you come here. Other little things I've noticed people make presumptions on is things like driving licenses. I've talked to a number of folks in the last week or so who just kind of offhandedly said, oh yeah, I need to get a driver's license when I'm over there. Somebody, I just got off the phone with them actually earlier today as of the time of this video, where they said, yeah, yeah, I need to get a driving license, but that should be easy enough to sort out once I'm there. Yeah, easy is not something to ever say when it comes to anything having to do with the bureaucracy. Neither here, and, and I'm not picking on Thailand. I mean, anywhere in Southeast Asia, if you need to deal with bureaucracy, easy ain't the word, you know, as we'd say back in Kansas. The, now, you may be able to deal with it in a somewhat straightforward manner, but even that, you know, bear in mind, it's a totally different bureaucracy and you're not used to dealing with it. And beyond even that, you're a foreign national. You're, you're asking for something effectively as a guest in the country, which brings me to another key point. Retirees don't ever seem, not ever, but there's a number of retirees I've noticed over the years that they fail to grasp language barriers and fail to take that into account when they're looking at moving abroad. And again, depending on where you live here in Thailand, it may not be, even be an issue. I know people that live in places like Pattaya, Hua Hin here in Bangkok, some folks up in Chiang Mai, Phuket, even Koh Samui, places that are heavily tourist centric. Okay, fair enough. You may not need to deal with a great deal of language barrier because, you know, folks in those locations speak a fair amount of English. The thing to take away from this video, however, though, is 
on every little thing, they're not going to have a full command of perfect colloquial English. In fact, if you're lucky to find a Thai who is at that level of capability, they're probably going to be somebody who's charging you for their services. So the thing that you need to understand about that is, yeah, it, language is something to bear in mind that it could cause you not problems, but it just adds an extra layer that you need to be aware of if you're looking to retire here. And the final thing I'll, I'll bring up with regard to presumptions by retirees, especially in their budgeting, one thing I've noticed over the years retirees do not take into account with regard to budgeting is they seem to presume they're always going to be eating Thai food. I, I've noticed this even with expats and backpackers and things when they when they try to do you know years back there were these kind of absurd sort of videos where you'd see from these people that are like how to live in Thailand on 10,000 baht a month or how to live in Thailand on the equivalent of $350 a month or whatever it was yeah that's theoretically possible if you've if you never eat a Western meal and you live exactly as you know a Thai you know, here in Bangkok, that would be like an office worker, but, you know, not a high-level office worker. It would be like somebody starting out in their career. You know, that, that would be a minimal level of salary. You can do it. But, again, you know, it's one of those you can drive a car with your feet. It doesn't make it a good idea. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about this in the extreme, though. I'm talking about this more from the standpoint of retirees. I don't think they ever fully comprehend that, yeah, there is a premium associated with Western dining here and with Western food generally when you go shopping and things. And that is something you should have at the back of your mind and maybe tack on an extra 15 to 30% when you're doing your tabulations if you're the type of person that likes to sit down and make a budget. If you're doing your food budget, bear in mind, you're gonna be eating more Western food than you think. Westerners, you know, I do it all the time. I've lived here for 16 years but I still like my Western food and I eat it far more often than even I realize. I mean, if, that, if you can't tell, I'm, I enjoy food. But the point I'm trying to make is this is another one of these presumptions that I think a lot of people, or assumptions that people come in with or they just don't even realize it could be a thing and it is something that can have an impact on you long term as a retiree here in the Kingdom of Thailand.